business or office of Boss or Carolina Country listening post today. And welcome back to Sam Moore Sports Talk with Kevin and the gang. Back to y'all in the studio. Hey, welcome back. NBA Talk. We've got a lot of stuff to get over. we got NBA Draft. We've got NBA Finals all in the same show. You know, they, they could at least wait a week so they could kind of split it up. So this is what was so crazy is like, f- I think, four or five minutes after they handed the the trophy uh, to the Raptors, uh, Roge, the big NBA reporter for ESPN, drew <laughs> He didn't even let the like. He didn't even give him the whole day to drop the news that the Washington Wizards were looking to sign the general manager from Toronto. You can't even let the man who was in the middle of being arrested yes. by a sheriff for pushing him for not having his ID right or or, or, or posted or whatever. You got you got. I, I tell you what, they don't they don't really care. Those guys, it's not up to them to look at their your face and know who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, they look. They're looking for that tag around your neck. Yeah. Right, yeah. I mean, they really don't care. And uh, it, it, isn't that kind of what you want them to do, Terry? Because they don't. They don't know. You're the general manager. You're not exactly up in. You know. You still might not. You're not always on television. You don't have the right path. Yeah. You're not always the front, the face of the franchise. Okay. They don't recognize you. You do all your work behind the scenes. Not many people behind the scenes are you know front and foremost and known by everybody. That's not. You know, a sports aficionado. Well, folks, uh, let's talk a little bit about this uh, Warriors and Toronto series. Of course, you know, it, it's just really hard to break down and, and talk about it really um, with the fact that, you know, everyone was hurt. You know, Durant, Durant got hurt. Clay Thompson got hurt. Looney had prob- it has probably broken ribs or something like I that. I thought it was a clavicle. clavicle. Um, Iggy Dollar has something. He might retire. Um, yeah. Everybody, but it seems like Steph and Draymond had some type of injury that we know of, um, and so and Terry was Terry was like saying it was it's sad that it's probably how how people are gonna think about it, but they are, which is you know, I and, and I picked Toronto to make it this far. I didn't think they was going they would win it if they were going against a healthy healthy team. And my number one reason, of course, is I think Kevin Durant's the best player in the world, and we talk about you know these point guards, and I think what happened was and it showed it. If this was, say, maybe Steph against – if this was Golden State against the Sixers, I think they could have won. Even if it was against Boston, I think they could have won. Mm-hmm. Because here, here's – but here's the thing, and here's what I'm getting at, is that year after year in the NBA, in the history of the sport, point guards do not lead their teams to championships. Best players leading their teams in scoring – at point guard, do not lead their teams in championships. Only two MVPs have been a uh, point guard has been under six foot nine, Isaiah and Chauncey. But Chauncey didn't even lead his team in scoring that year. Richard Hamilton did. So only three times we talk about this all all the time. NBA history: Steph, Isaiah, and Magic all did it once, led their team in scoring once, and won a championship. So point guards don't do it. So now you got Kevin Durant goes out. Well, the other team has one of the best small forwards in the NBA. Right behind you, put him, LeBron, and Kevin Durant all in the same category right now. Well, I think right. today, well, this is what someone said. Obviously, as of because today, as of Kawhi. today, as of today, Kawhi Leonard's the best player in the NBA. Well, as of today, they he, exactly he won the championship for at least until next season. Mm-hmm. He's the best player in the NBA, and he proved it too. He went out there and he played hard. And, and Terry, they played at people that you know. And this is kind of what we've been trying to tell people for, for the last few years is. Don't fall in love with the Steph. I mean, the Steph's playing D'Antoni ball. He's playing that Steve Nash position, but better than Steve Nash. He shoot that three pointer from forty feet. He's just is it's just something different. And everyone else tried to do that and try to duplicate that. And then Toronto puts together a classic lineup. You got a regular solid point guard. You got a shooting guard that can play defense. You got a three. true power forward in the center. Yep. You've got an all-around small forward. And you got a true power forward and a true center. Like mm-hmm. they had, it, they have a regular NBA lineup, Terry, and they took it. And, and looking at everyone else in the East, I'm good. And, and one thing I'm good at, and the reason I picked them, I can look at the starting lineups. I think a lot of times, be like this team has an advantage. This team don't, and just just through the matchup, say, I think this team has the best. This team has the best lineup. They should go the farthest. That's why I said they should go the farthest. Now, matchups, you never know what can happen. Someone gets hurt in the playoffs that they might get upset. But just look See, at which that. See, which is what happened. I think if Golden State would have switched it up and played Looney and maybe DeMarcus Cousins 
at the same time on the floor where they can at least try and match size wise, mm -hmm. I think they would have and maybe have moved. Well, I mean, you could still put Iggy on Kawhi, I guess. But like I said, if they were completely healthy, even without Kevin Durant, I think this would have been a seven-game series with Golden State having po a possible chance of winning. Toronto not moving the ball. I don't see why Golden State kept switching because th th that's their defense to switch everything. So they kept putting Demarcus and Steph in the situations themselves. I felt because they weren't looking to to to. The Warriors looked to move the ball to the open man, right, mm -hmm. Terry? Mm -hmm. Toronto wasn't doing that. Mm -hmm. They were looking to get the Kawhi one-on-one -on -one with somebody. Yeah. And they kept switching it and giving them Steph or giving them DeMarcus instead of, hey, let's fight through the screens, let's play regular defense, and then we can follow through. A couple of stats. That, uh, go ahead, Terry, uh, if you had a comment on something before I get into well, some well, of the fun I mean, stats on the series. The only thing I'm looking at is, I mean, just like we said, everybody's going to sit back and they're going to say, how come Toronto won? Everybody's going to say, well, Durant didn't play, and then he's going to name everybody else. And gonna, I mean, I'm the first one, too, because I said, if Clay Thompson hadn't went down, we would have been seeing game seven. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean, I just believe that. And I know when we put this up here on this board, this hot takes from Hunter, Golden State is just as good without Durant. They are. They are as good without him. Wrong. I mean, you can put Durant on there, and I think that I've excels been waiting them. I've to get into that. Well, it, it excels them. But we also have to look back and see what everybody did. Is the NBA now going to become one of them plans that we saw uh, Popovich do it a few years back where he set all of his starters? Yeah. Toronto That's set, it next year. That's yeah. everybody. That will be every team That's that shows a superstar. They will at least give them 20, 20, 20 games. Uh, games yeah, they'll give them 20 games not off. Play. You know, That's so insane. are we going to say – and it's bad that I had to sit here and say – if you have a bull 500 record, you're going to make the playoffs. So is it going to matter whether you're one through eight? You know, I mean, it's not. And if, you, if, if home court advantage means that much to you, then abs then play for it. Yeah, if not, it. if not, we've seen the bar make an home, Eastern Conference. Home seen, court didn't matter at all because the Warriors won three in Oracle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or, it, it just. Yeah, the, the Raptors won yeah, three right, in Oracle. Williams. Yeah, and I was about to say, and, and it doesn't matter. We've seen LeBron as a four seed in the East just go all the way and win the, and win the finals. I mean, it doesn't matter if you've got a great team. Even the Golden State wasn't even the one seed. Or were they? Yeah, okay, it had just flip-flop. It was between them and Denver. Mm -hmm. and but even then, like, at Golden State, if it meant that your players were going to be rested and you wouldn't have had to worry about these injuries... Yeah, well, you know you're good enough as a three seed that you'll get there in the end. And I, I agree. Thought, this I is thought, but basically what we're going to see next year. A lot of stars are going to sit. With mm -hmm. or without Clay, and, and and because of Demarcus Cousins wasn't 100%. When when Kevin Durant was out, I thought they were done. And because Kawhi's the best player on the floor, and and what we want to mean by that, and what we talk about all the time, Terry, trying mm -hmm. to tell these young guys that in the fourth quarter. Someone has to get buckets a lot of times by themselves, a lot of times tough buckets because, like, they're playing defense, right? We Steph, saw them do that in game five, but Steph, they still lost. Steph, how's, how can he beat a double team other than firing up a three in people's face? You know, he's not going to take it to the rack and dunk on both yeah. of them. And, and, and so, with Durant off the floor, there's no threat in the lane with Curry and Thompson. You got to remember when they won their championship, when they, when they won their championship without Durant, who else was on the floor? I keep saying it. Harrison Barnes. He was that mid-range threat. He was the threat to take it to the hole and dunk on somebody. They get rid of him. They fill in with, fill in with Durant. When Durant goes out, now you have nobody. Are you, are you scared? Is Iggy Dollar going to blow by anybody anymore? No. no. Clay's not going to dunk on anybody. You would rather Steph take it to the hole and do one of his side winding off the thing back, off the spin backboard shots than shoot a three, right? So what scares you defensively without another slasher on the floor with Curry, with Thompson, with, without that Harrison Barnes, without that Durant, because if Boogie was healthy, they tried it. They, By God, they tried it. They tried to feed him and make they it did. happen. But he, he, he couldn't move his legs. He, he, one of his See, legs that's, move. that's just what hurt them so much was the injuries. Because yeah. Boogie's a fantastic yeah. player. I think Boogie might be the best center in the game. I think you truly well, might be him or Djokovic. He's going to be next year. See, I was going to say, they don't, they don't, I told my buddy that. I said, I'm excited to see where he goes. He said, I'm not a boogie fan. I said, man, he'll go out there and get you 20 and 15. It don't matter. He's double-double machine. All right, and he can shoot threes. All right, Terry Hunter, I got proof that that is the most false 
statement ever in the history of this. Nope. I you can say it and I won't no. believe it. Do y'all know either. do y'all know the records? With or without with and without Kevin Durant? My that doesn't that doesn't matter to me. In the finals without Kevin Durant. Oh, in the finals. Or with. You don't, you don't with or without first. Which oh, don't matter. Which don't matter. Oh, and seven. In the finals <laughs> with Kevin Durant, the Warriors are nine and one. If Kevin Durant plays the basketball game in the finals, the Warriors mm-hmm. are nine and one. Without Kevin Durant in the NBA finals, eight and ten. Eight and ten in the finals without Kevin Durant. With Kevin Durant, they're nine and one with two championships. Without Kevin Durant, they're one and two. That is why Kevin Durant. They're not better nope. or just as good without Kevin but Durant. But they won nope. the final not even close. When he was out there. They won one. They won one when he wasn't there. They went seventy three and nine when he yeah. wasn't there. And lost. Yeah, I know they lost. They still won. They still went seventy three and nine, nine on the and season. One eight and ten. I, they they were seventy three and nine. T- all right, let me they ask you this: three one lead. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm, let me ask you this: Do they win this championship if they're all healthy except Kevin Durant? No, I don't agree with that. I think they do. If you give me a one hundred percent Boogie, one hundred percent Iggy, one hundred percent Clay, one hundred percent Steph. Well, Boogie was never one hundred percent at any point in this season. He really wasn't. He turned off that Achilles tear from last year. It's hard, it's hard year. to say if on him. I agree with. Well, even Clay. even a not what ninety percent Boogie. I mean, he'd still got, he would move a lot better than what he did. The two games that they Looney, 100% Looney. The two games that the Warriors won in this series, mm-hmm. they had a 20 to nothing run in one game, mm-hmm. and they had a uh, 23s in the other game, mm-hmm. and one by one. Yeah. So they had an unprecedented run in one game and won, and then they had to hit 23s in another game to win by one. So my, they barely won two ga- the two games they did win. From an injury-laden Golden State team to a very healthy Toronto team, right. there's a tremendous difference. I 100% totally agree. That's what I'm saying. Like if, they, if, if you give me Golden State fully healthy, even if Kevin Durant is still out, I still think Golden State can win this in seven. I'm not going to say they'll sweep them. I'm not going to say it'll be in five. Cannot, I said it would have gone they seven. Could, they can. They could have been. They would have been in seven. one guy on that whole court that Toronto would be better at, and that's uh, – Kawhi. Yeah, Kawhi. Because Glowry, he, I mean, he stepped That's up. The yeah, but there's been a lot of knocks. There's been big knocks. You know who really See, disappeared, though? Siakam outscored Draymond by like 50-some points in this series, maybe nah. six. You know who really disappeared, though, for the Raptors? I was surprised. Danny Green. Yeah, he, 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 he disappeared. Shoot he disappeared. He got one. Game, he, got one. He, got one. he got one, and he disappeared. But this is, you want to know what is so crazy? He threw the ball away because Draymond fouled him seven times and Siakam left hey, his feet. That, and this, this, is the, I, this, 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 be, this has become a meme. This, and this, is the last thing this has become a meme Draymond right now. This has become a meme hey, on what Twitter. What about Draymond taking a timeout? What about Draymond? He had to. No, he didn't. They didn't have any. That's the only way the clock stop. It runs out. Why didn't he try? Yeah, I mean, at he least he's smart enough to know I got to do something for us to even have a chance. Why didn't he turn around and just shoot a three? I mean, you know, he's on his back. Well, he didn't have to dive. You know, he could bend over and pick a ball. Come okay. on, but here's here's the he man. He dove. Now here's the, real quick. What's funny is go back and watch the play. Draymond actually went backcourt. Technically, the the refs when well, they went back and watched it, I thought they were going to call backcourt no tech. Inbounds of a half a second. He went backcourt. I think. I th- I'm not 100 percent sure, but if you go back and watch it, watch it carefully. I think he actually went backcourt before the timeout. I thought the meme the is you. Chris Paul hasn't done it. Russell Westbrook hasn't done it. Who's another big? Damian Lillard hasn't done it. But you know who has done it? Jeremy Lin has won an NBA mm-hmm. championship. He might have only seen one minute in these playoffs. But he has won a championship before Chris Paul. Before Chris Paul, who's one of the best point guards, true point guards. It's not like he goes out there and is the leading scorer for his team. James Harden is. And he still hasn't won a championship. And he got a championship before Hoodie Mello. 
And I, I do like give him. Lowry a lot of credit. Are you talking about a guy who stood up in the last game? He's been hating on him a lot. Oh, I know. But that's oh, it's Kyle cool. Lowry because, points right off because you know, Toronto's, they've always been able to secure a great seed. Like they did. Yeah. They did. They've always been able to secure a great seed, the Raptors. But they've always been the laughing stock of the East by either getting put out in the first round or the Eastern Conference Finals because Kyle Lowry half the time doesn't know how to show up in big games. And that was the knock on him and DeRozan. Well, Kyle Lowry played great this this whole playoff series. The first, this is I saw this was a crazy stat. The first game in the playoffs that they played, you know, they lost to, to Orlando, their first game in the playoffs. Kyle Lowry had zero points. He didn't score a single point. In the final game of the NBA championship, he had 27. Yep. It's a long way. Um, we got the draft talk about next. Gotta get to a break. Uh, Trying to think if there's any any it seems like I had something else I was about to say and then I saw my note for my dra- for the draft talk on, on that for this. That's a joke to me. I'm looking right at it. that's a joke. JP's in there on the on the phone with somebody. We'll give it a sec before we, we do go to break. Um you know, going forward into next year, um the, the things what I've seen on the free agency stuff, what it seems to be like everyone's consensus on. If Kyrie goes to Brooklyn, mm-hmm. Kimba's going to the Knicks. That's everything I'm saying. Kimba is their second choice, and he's he and he don't care. He's their second choice, apparently. But Kimba has also Kyrie made it perfectly there. clear that he would stay for less than a max in Charlotte if they can yeah. put pieces around him. Well, let me tell you something: they're not putting no pieces around you anytime soon. So yeah. go get your money and try and win a chip. So Terry, the, and speaking of the pieces and stuff, how do you look at pieces? So the Raptors just won a championship, mm-hmm. right? Not a single lottery pick. Is yeah. on their roster. The Charlotte Hornets have nine lottery picks yep. on their roster. The ra- listen to what anything? I just said, folks. The Raptors, well, I'm about to go ahead and talk about this draft. The Raptors don't have one single lottery pick on their roster, and the Charlotte Hornets have nine. The Raptors just won a championship. The Charlotte Hornets have never made it out of the second round. JP, you right ready for a break in there? He's still on the phone. All right, let's take a break. We'll be back. we got to talk uh, the draft and NASCAR this weekend on ktcbroadcasting.com. Welcome back to Saturday Sports Talk. Getting fired up uh, over the Hornets uh, draft. Uh, you know, it, it's that's probably been the worst spot in all this, like we just said a minute ago, that they picked. Um, they've got nine lottery picks, Terry, and didn't make the playoffs. Uh, is that Kimba's fault or is that the coach's fault? I mean, you know, you sit there and say Kimba ain't got no help. He's got nine lottery picks. So is that the GM's fault or is that the coach? And like, if you got a coach, and like, like I don't, I don't believe in Borrego. I've already told you, you that. How you go to Borrego right now and say, like, dude, you had nine lottery picks that didn't make the playoffs with an All Star point guard and the Raptors with one All Star? I guess one only one. Well, if they had one, one or two more wins point. than they had the year before with Clifford, yeah. like. Well, it made a big difference. I mean, uh, to me, when you go into a got rid of a Hall of Fame center, and I know he got hurt, but they got rid of a Hall of Fame center and got a new coach. And, and now they're out of a veteran. I mean, I thought it was two years too late uh, when Tony Parker should have retired. But even still, I mean, now they're out of a veteran, and they might be out of two veterans if Kimber Walker decides to go and take the money. Go ahead, Terry. Well, my whole deal is I think when you go into lottery picks, and I know you're going to sit here and say, Okay, we're going to take the best guy available. And I'm like Hunter was saying in between breaks, you got three guys and then everybody else is just your pool. That's this, yeah, that's at least in this draft. Yeah. you got three. Yeah, three. and then beyond, it's whoever you want. So if you're in the top three, you pick the best. If you're below that, take the player that's going to fit your organization. And it don't have to be the next available big dog. But if it's not, pick somebody who's going to be able to take care of a small forward or a power forward or a number two man, one man. But, I mean, you you cannot go into each lottery thinking I'm just going to take the next best guy, even if I've got somebody in that spot, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, just to stick him in that spot too. So now all of a sudden i got two guys and a power forward. So what am I going to do? Try to switch one of them to be a small I mean, you know, you cannot look at it like that. you got to try to fit your organization's best need. And if you want to say it don't work, ask Toronto. They did it. Well, well Terry, one thing I'll, I'm going to shoot back on kind of that theory is that with the, you know, the lowering of the age, the one and done there and everything, a lot of these players like Giannis and everybody are slipping to, like, in the teens. Yeah. In the te- and so, like, Kawhi, you know, Ginobili was picked 46th. 
<laughs> I mean, so let's, you know, you start looking at these, uh, at this. So what I want the Hornets to do is to stop picking big men, first of all, stop picking the best defensive players, second of all, and pick a score. They haven't picked a uh, every they year. They picked one. I'm looking right at it. He's traded to the Los Angeles Clippers. Sean Gilgus Alexander was a scorer in college. I mean, now he's a role player for the Clippers, but even still, that would and he's he's a little bit of a bigger point guard. He's not the five foot nine, almost barely six foot that Kimba is. I, I, they draw, that was a scorer right there. Malik Monk's not turned out to be what you want him to be, but that's your own fault because I don't think you develop him. I mean, I'm just looking around. I hear a lot of people saying Frank Kaminsky's gone after this year. I think this, he's, I think they're using him as trade fodder for anything. I, I don't know. I, we're just looking at this, and I don't – Noah Vonley, that really, that really worked out, didn't it? I mean, it, the, the, their, their picks – I thought I had my list in here of uh, the picks and who they should have picked over the years. Uh, but you could put a lineup that would sound something like this. Um, I know one of them was. You have you that have had, if you want. You, you could, could have you had. You could have Draymond. You could have Harrison Barnes. You could have Jokic. Giannis. They could have had Giannis. Right now, their starting lineup could, could consist of Barnes, Giannis, and Jokic, and Kimba Walker, and all they had to do was draft right. Now we could talk about the. How many years ago was it where they drafted Kimba Walker? It was uh, eight. 2011. Look at that. Look at what. Look at what's sitting there in 2011 from New Orleans, Portland, and then they trade to Milwaukee. Uh, a, a, they, drafted a, a, Tobias they drafted Tobias Harris, they who, who, who was bo- who was borderline All Star last year. They already drafted him. Yeah. He could have been, been on the team. Tobias Harris. What what did they see out of him? He has gotten better every year he's been in the NBA. Facts. M- MKG at two. They drafted a player who had was had tremendous upside. He could play defense. But he couldn't shoot a basketball. Like, ask somebody you pick at eight, Terry. This guess no. game is meant about getting buckets. And, and see, you got a score. Here's another quick thing that, you know, not only have the Hornets drafted bad, they've had bad luck in the years that when there was an, a, a stud, mm-hmm. they always ended up a spot behind them. Mm-hmm. They weren't high enough to pick Steph Curry. They were one spot in that Emeka Okahora Dwight Howard draft. They were one spot behind in the Alonzo Mourning Shaquille O'Neal draft. They're always the one spot behind MKG that year. Wasn't that the Anthony Davis year? One spot. Yeah. It, they get the two and, spot, one well, spot so cra- and that was the everybody says is rigged because yeah. Charlotte has the worst worst record in NBA history and ends up getting a two pick instead the of the Pelicans. To the city that uh, that the team moved to. Yeah. The Pelicans have had two new p- number one picks since moving to New Orleans. The Hornets haven't had one. I mean, I, I think was it was LJ picked one, or, or I think we had one, one, one pick. Yeah, Larry Johnson was picked for one. And that might be the only one. We've that's it. Had. We I haven't had a number one pick since. We keep and getting twos. So we get we're gonna do Adam Morrison at three. Is the type of things we do. MKG at two. That was just awful. Cody's not terrible, but at four, I don't know. Uh, that draft, let's see, we passed it up. For, who could we passed up? There was one of these years that that wasn't too bad. That there was just nobody in it. So Victor Oladipo. We passed up. Uh, Victor we didn't pass, we didn't pass him up. He was. He was. Oh well, yeah, it was taken. So you really passed up C.J. McCollum in that draft and Giannis. They they drafted Cody Zeller instead of Giannis. So you're looking at those two standing there, and it'll work out, Terry. You know they go with Zeller over Giannis. Dennis that Schreiber was the there. year Anthony Bennett was taking it number one, and he was just a huge bust. Rudy Gobert went at 27. I mean. A lot of people, every draft you can look at that and say, man, the Hornets missed. They've missed someone in every draft. Uh, but you look that, at that. And draft they've missed an All Star in every draft the last eight years. A lot of people messed up on yeah. Giannis. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he went. What was it? What did 15th. He, what, so yeah, 15th. Utah, Dallas, OKC, 76ers, Portland. I mean, think of them guys Minnesota, in front of them, how many of them are still even playing, probably. Maybe uh, some of them, but a lot of them not. Sac- almost every one of them is. Is still in the league. I don't know. Is Alex Lynn still in the league? He went five to Phoenix. I mean, that was crazy from Maryland to me. Mm-hmm. And see, Terry, he was just a he was just a big body. He's Kelly Olynyk is still playing. He's somewhere. And, and Stephen that's Adams, freshman. that's a good pick. He's pretty consistent. C.J. McCollum is good. Caldwell Pope is a he's a role player. I mean, he's not a starter. 
Ben Macklemore was great in college at Kansas, but didn't it never came around to be anything in San or Sacramento. All right, with all that said, Hunter. Yes. Looking at this draft, this mock draft, it's Michael Jordan has got his hands all over this, and you know that's why. You know it. It has to be. It's got um, the Hornets picking little from North Carolina at twelve. With that at twelve. Is that a decent pick? I think I don't know that much about the rest of the people in, in behind him. Let me tell you something. Hachimura was behind him is a great big man. It's a great big That's man. Pick and roll shooter. I want the best shooting guard or small forward scorer. Well, there's a better the North draft. Carolina player right there. You think Cameron's better than Nasir Little? Absolutely. Upside? Now, I don't know because Nasir Little is just an athletic freak. But as coming out, already knowing how to score, if you want production now, Cam Johnson's the way to go. I want a future All Star. Is what I want. The Hornets. I, I, that's all. I, I mean, I know it's the twelfth. I know I'm asking way too much for that pick, but I'm tired of watching scrub after scrub after scrub after scrub. Well, we've already they seen you can get a diamond in the rough with Giannis going at fifteen. Right. You just got to find it. The right. thing though on right. this draft is it is a players. huge three man draft. Everybody's talking about it. it's either going to be Zion, Ja, or it's R.J. Barrett. Okay, what I want him to do honestly. After all these years of picking power forwards and and these point guard Malik Monk and people like this, whoever just have a one on one tournament in Charlotte in your draft yeah. things. Whoever yeah. wins the one on one, that's who you draft. I don't care what his name is, where he's from. They need someone who could win a basketball contest at playing basketball. That's PJ that's PJ all Washington. Just, PJ one. Washington's not bad out of Kentucky. I don't, I don't look at Little as being your. Guy, you go to if the game's on the line. Well, here's the thing. There's the big knock on Little. Little, Little, Little showed he showed potential when it came to the tournament time. Okay, he showed he could get his own. You know, he could make his own shot by driving the basket. But he's not a shooter. He's not going to shoot from the he's, perimeter. He's, so. I mean, he's basically what? What was his name? He's he's a. More refined Togado, just not as good on defense. Is, is Nasir Little like Marvin Williams? Marvin Williams, Williams is already there. So, so I don't know why they were drafting another one. All right. The secret still of the draft. Ball, ball, God dang it. it is. I'm telling you. Be ready, Terry. Seven foot two. Bow, bow. Out of Oregon. If my dad's listening to Will Boykins over at Nissan of Shelby, this morning they're doing hot dogs over at Nissan of Shelby today. Bo Bo is the son of the late great Manute Bo. Manute was seven foot seven, shot blocking extraordinaire. Couldn't really get up a court that much, well, at all. That was his biggest thing, is he couldn't get up and down the court. Terry, well, what people don't remember is that Manute could shoot three pointers. He hit six and a half, which was the record at one point in the NBA. His son. Seven foot two freshman coming from Oregon. Now, Terry, this is what this is what's the difference between his dad and his son. His son can dribble. His son can shoot on the move. His son has post up moves, fadeaways, hook shots. This, what I was watching the other day, an NBA scout. You're gonna roll your eyes when I say this. Is a combination of Durant and the Greek freak that everyone is overlooking him because of his dad but this kid actually has handles and is seven foot with handles and he's going to be your next late break big breaking star late in the draft I was going to scroll down and see how far they had to be because I was wondering if the Hornets if they're in a position if they do pick a big man I won't bow bow but I really well, want who to else do they have that we can keep looking and I can tell you if they would miss on somebody let me, let me scroll back up just real quick Here's what they got after. They got Little going to him at 12. Uh, directly after him, they've got uh, Harrow. Tyler Harrow's not bad. Hachimura. I like Hachimura a lot. Alexander. I like Hachimura with some uh, with some shrimp sauce and some rice. <laughs> I know, really good I, you know, wow, Alexander Walker. <laughs> did, did, did you know who Hachimura was? No. Yeah. Rub, rub I like to watch. I mean, he was the one that put up good numbers oh, against yeah. Duke. They, there was another yeah. power forward that's rated higher than he was out of Gonzaga that was hurt for most of the year. So Hachimura really had to step up. His draft stock really climbed. PJ, but what's he going to be in the NBA? Number three? P.J. Washington. Size-wise? 
I mean, I think I think he could play four. Yeah. I think he could play four. I don't want to say that guy's name. I think I'm going to break the FCC rules. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, my phone do. Kelton Johnson, Bowl Bowl. I mean, like, you know, you can wish and hope everybody's Zion Williamson, but you've got to take a chance on one of these guys mm-hmm. Can is going to be good. I don't like them take – it's proven to the fact they're not going to develop someone. So yeah. why pick someone that you think can develop instead of saying, hey, I'm just going to pick the best score. i got to have somebody to score a basket. Especially if Kim believes – how are they going to score next year? If Kim believes, what do they have? Depends on what. <laughs> they will lose every single game almost. They might win 10 games here. I was getting ready to say the same thing. If that. I don't know if they would win that. Would they not? If they lost Kim. Because he's the main guy when it comes to the end of games taking the shot. I don't see anybody else on that team willing to step up and take the last shot. I mean, honestly, like... God, if only he would fall. And so think about this. If they got the number one pick next year and then no, and then there's nobody like Zion or anybody like that, like he's going to be coming out next I'll year. I'll tell you what, I'd do a sign-in trade. Like I would that. do a sign-in trade right now if they could get it done. Kimball Walker traded the Lakers for the number four spot, and I would take this kid in a heartbeat. I would take DeAndre Hunter in a heartbeat. To me, he reminds me a lot, and I know it's a lot to say because he just won the championship. He reminds me a lot of Kawhi Leonard. He can, he can, uh, that's the yeah. stud from Virginia. Okay. He, he can guard. He can guard one through four. He can guard one through four. Great on defense, and can quietly get you twenty. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I, th- I do like him. Uh, I like him a lot. A lot more than Culver, that, that Culver guy coming out of uh, Texas Tech. Yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. You probably could do a sign If you could do a sign and trade, because they want a point guard, and uh, they, because if they can't get Kyrie, same with the Knicks, they would probably deal with Kimba. All right, so here's what I'm thinking is going to happen from everything I see. Man, it's going to be tough for Kawhi to, to, Kawhi to leave. But, but from, from no matter what happens next year or in the next few weeks of free agency, Wherever, just this, this, just next year, not not in, going down the future. Wherever, Cole, Cole, my, my, going into this offseason, I was going to say whoever Durant signs with will be the favorite. That's but now he's about to probably miss the whole season. Now it's whoever Kawhi signs with is the favorite because it's only one of two places. To the Clippers or Clippers Toronto. Clippers or Toronto. If he signs with Toronto, he's obviously the favorite in the East. Mm-hmm. If he signs with the Clippers, they were what? The five seed? Or six seed, and they took what Golden State was six or seven. Better than the Clippers right now with, with Kawhi Leonard in the West. The Clippers are, are pretty damn good. Goes to the Clippers. If he goes to the Clippers. Would you, is there anyone you picking to, to to beat? As of right now, I'd have to see what I'm, I have to see what pieces move to the Lakers. I know that. So that's what I'm saying. If just as of right now, everybody stays the same, but Kawhi is the only person that moves. He stays in Toronto or he goes to the Clippers. What I'm saying is that Toronto, that Kawhi Leonard's move should be who the favorite is going next year. Unless there's some major, like, five people join LeBron. I, 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 right now, what you're saying, I agree. Because the Clippers, I I, they're good enough. Them, I mean, against uh, Portland or Houston. Even with what the Clippers have got now. Yeah. I mean, that's just me. That's right. just my thought. All right, NASCAR race this weekend. All right, JP, let's get let's get uh, get out of here. What, you got times on there on your broadcast schedule? You got some NASCAR racing? Uh, this week they're in Iowa, Terry, Iowa. and uh, I, I don't have it in here. Oh, they don't have the broadcast schedule in there? It's not here in front of me. No. Go down to, uh, I guess I can just click on this button, Terry. It says NASCAR on TV. What do you probably think? work.